everyone, it's Nancy. I'm back again, but this time not to show how I make tassels. I thought I'd share with you how I made this pocket and this tag. Um, this is a vellum pocket that I embossed with some uh, copper embossing powder. And then you pull the tag out. It's a double tag. This little one's attached. You can journal on the back. I added a little gold tab at the top, some eyelash yarn and some gold thread. And then I edged it a little bit in gold and sewed around it. And then I backed them with some coffee dyed paper. So you can write on the back. So let's go through some of the supplies you'll need in case you want to make this too. So I started off deciding to use <coughs> cardstock because I have tons of car cardstock from making cards many years ago and also from scrapbooking. Um, so I wanted to use up some of my cardstock and I thought, well, it'll add a little color to the journals. So that for this project, I picked this green cardstock. A lot of my cardstock has this textured side to it. So what I do is I'll use the textured side for the front of the tag and then the smooth side for the back of the tag. So when the person writes on it, they're not writing over this textured part here. So you need some cardstock, and then for the pocket, this pocket, um, I use this gold vellum. Um, it's got like a real nice gold sheen to it. I got this at, um, I believe I got it at Joann's in their um, open paper section. And the size for th the, the pocket, the piece of paper that you'll need size-wise for the pocket would be, um, let me get my little card here, um, eight and a half inches wide by five and seven inches tall, or in centimeters it would be 21.5 centimeters by 15 centimeters. And then I'll show you later how to score it and fold it. You'll also need some coffee dyed paper to put on the back or whatever you would like to put on the back for um, blank journaling space. You'll need some glue, um, you know, whatever you use to attach your paper. Um, then you will also need I um, distress the edges of the um, floral card part with Vintage Photo. So if you want to distress the edges, that's what I used. Um, for the edges of the green cardstock, I uh, you go, am going to use Inca Gold today, but for this card, I used this um, Vintage Silk Opal Magic Wax. Um, it's by Art Alchemy, and um, it's, which is also by Prima. So one of those two will work. To adhere the vellum, you'll need some double-sided tape. I found that's the best. It doesn't show through as much as glue does. Um, for the tag, for the fibers, I use this green variegated eyelash yarn, which I also sell in my store, my Etsy shop. And I also use some of this gold thread. And <clears throat> I've had this roll for a long time, but I do know you can get gold thread like this, um, either in the sewing department or the um, needlework department. 
in the craft stores. For the little um, gold tab at the top, I used, if I can get it here out of my box, it's hard to pick up. I used um, gold paper, and um, this piece, particular piece is three quarters of a three quarters of an inch wide by one and a half inches long. And you'll need two of those kind of pieces. And then to make the rounded corners, instead of a corner rounder, which didn't work real well, I found a button that's about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And I used that to um, draw the rounded edges on the little tab on these both ah oh, <laughs> both of them and then to do the embossing you will need a stamp and a um what is it called embossing ink pad or a versamark pad which i often use for embossing it's a watermark stamp pad, and it looks like that. And embossing powder. This is by Ranger. I use, it's called um, Super Fine Detail, and it's copper. So I use that for the embossing, and then, of course, a heat tool to uh, heat the embossing powder, and a stamp. And the stamp I used was from this collection by Stampers Anonymous. Um, it's called Wildflowers. And in case you want to get the number, that is the number of it right there. CMS 253. And let's see what else. I think I've covered everything. You'll need a ruler, like a tear ruler or a metal straight edge like that and a scoreboard or and if you don't have a scoreboard you can use a straight edge um, for tearing and let's see what else it might be helpful to have a bone folder and I think that's it except for the images the images I used on these two cards came from this book. It's called The Observer's Book of Wildflowers. It was published in England, so they're very hard to get here in the States. Um, but I did find some on in an Etsy shop, or on Etsy. Um, and I bought uh, about three of them. Um, one was wildflowers, the other one was garden flowers. Actually, I bought four. Garden flowers, wildflowers, birds' nests, and birds. I, I love these books. I love the, the size of them. It, these pages make for such really nice um, journal cards for like a, you know, a botanical journal. So that's the book I used for my images. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. We'll first make the tags. And what you wanna do is tear your cardstock. Now the size of these tags, um, just for your information, the large one is about three and a half by five and a quarter, roughly. And the small one is two and a quarter by about three and an eighth or three. So what I'm gonna do is just use my original tag as a measurement. And I'm just gonna make marks where the edge of the tag is roughly. And when you do this, and cardstock is kind of thick and it's hard to tear, 
is make sure you leave yourself enough of an edge to grab onto when you're tearing. It didn't do that at the top, but I'll show you what I do when it's kind of a narrow edge like that. So let's take the tear ruler and we'll start by tearing. Now I don't have my grid here, but um, I'm trying to stay away from that glare. Um, so actually I want to tear this way, I think. Let me just see. Yeah, because this has a colored core and I don't want the colored core showing. I want to tear in a particular direction. So what I do is I usually take the bone folder or my fingers and press against that edge a little bit. And that gives it a start. And it really makes it easier to tear. Set that aside. And find my mark. Now here I'm gonna have to guess a little for how straight I am. But straight is not particularly what we're going for here anyways. So just press down hard. And um, so that paper doesn't slip from under the ruler. one's real small. Um, we'll see if we can do it with the ruler. If not, just press it like that and do it by hand. And there we have it. Okay, and then for the smaller one, get that torn. I'll do the same thing. Just mark my edge, give myself enough room for tear, tearing and grabbing onto the paper. It's hard to see my little, there we go. I'm really sorry about the glare. Um, I don't really know how to fix it without turning the lights off. So um, I'm sorry if it really, really bothers you that much. Oh, we're gonna have to turn this this way. Remember, we don't want the core of the card showing. Do top and bottom. My husband is out of town this weekend for an archery tournament, so I'm trying to take advantage of the time I have to myself and get some videos. Made. And he has three students competing this weekend, so I really hope things go well. Because he coaches archery too. Alright, so we got our tags torn. Now we'll do the images. And out of that book, I chose this one for the large card and this one for the smaller card. As you can tell, these have really, I have only just a narrow edge to work with. So instead of using the ruler, you could still use a ruler, but it's very narrow. I just kind of fold it over the paper. And then I took that little edge that I folded over and tore along the folded edge. And let's 
see, this one's going to be really hard because it's really narrow. But it's doable. Just give it a torn edge. How easy that tears once you fold it. And I think we'll do this side just a little bit too. Just to give more of a border around it. This is really narrow. And I use my forefinger and my thumb to kind of guide along that fold line. And then we'll do the bottom. And we'll just see if we can include. No. So we'll do it just above that page number there. And if it's crooked, that makes it all that much better for, because I don't want it perfect. Okay, now let's just tuck. Yep, that's gonna work real well. And for this one, we have this image that we wanna tear out. What I did, I went right along that edge of that, those words, folded it, and tore. And if your image is smaller, you can always make this a little bit smaller. There's no rule to exactly what size it needs to be. And this is gonna work real well. Let's just get this little edge here. And if there's some words showing, that's, I think that gives it a lot of character. And then just a little bit on this edge, right along there, just a little bit. Okay, so we have our two images. Now we're gonna ink the edges a little bit and then we're gonna glue them down. And I do this just to make it stand out a little bit more. Not really to give it an aged look, but just more to give it a defining edge. It shows up a little bit better on the card. I was afraid the Distress Ink wouldn't stick to this glossy um, paper, but it seems to have s stayed on on my other card, so. Okay, we're gonna put the ink away. And now we just glue. And what I'm gonna use is some Fabri-Tac, or you can also use um, art glue. Um, just need one piece of scrap paper here. So, you know what? I changed my mind. We'll use art clear glue because the Fabri-Tac has been kind of thick and I don't really know whether it's because it's cold or it's just
getting thick. So the little edge, blue, with some in the middle. And then we get our, oh, stick it down and I'll find my little, just a little bit. Get those edges stuck down. Maybe have a little seeping out. Just wipe it up with some paper towel. Can't lose my pen or my glue. Okay, um, the next step would be to sew around the edges with the, um, I used a zigzag stitch. But I can't do that right now because I can't bring my sewing machine over. So we will um, skip the sewing. And um, for today, we'll, we will keep these as is without any stitching. The so next thing I would do is to put on the tab let me just demonstrate to you how I made the tabs. I took this little piece, I folded it in half like that, and then took a pencil, laid the button down, and centered it on the tag. And I also pushed the top up a little because we don't want to, um, right here, because we don't want to um, um, cut our fold off. Okay, my scissors just drew around those little edges there and then you cut. a nice rounded corner tab and I just dropped my button but I have another one made so so we have two tabs I'm gonna use this one and screw those on And I glued the tabs on before I sewed. And that worked out real nice because um, because the stitching went around the edge of the bottom edge of the tag. There's one. I'm going to move it down just a little bit. I want it to be like right over the edge of that. And we'll do this one. Sorry if you hear the washer in the background. Sometimes I forget when I'm doing the video not to run the washer. Okay. This tab is a little bit bigger than on the original. The original one I cut down just a little bit. So we have our tabs and I just remembered there's one little supply was a hole puncher. I took my eights hole punch 
and just punch the hole in the tab. Make sure I get it where I want it. I should wait till these dry. I'm gonna wait till these dry a little bit more because the paper is kind of soft. Okay, the next thing is to take the ink of gold and I just do it with my finger. And sometimes I have a piece of scrap paper, sorry, where I can rub it off a little bit. And go around the edges with it. And I did both sides. Since I have this core showing, I'm going to add a little ink to the edges first. To darken up that core there. Okay. Let's see if this is dry enough to punch. I certainly hope so. Yep. And what I should have done is also go around the edge with the gold so that white doesn't show. Okay. Now we'll do this part. So what I do, put the coffee dye paper on and I want it torn. So I just make a light mark where I want it to tear. And I want it to go underneath that tab. So mark it about right there. And I do the same thing that I did with the, the floral with this with this as I fold it and then I tear. Okay, all we have to do is distress and um, the edges a little bit. If you want, you don't have to. And stick it down with some art glitter glue or whatever adhesive you use. And like I said before, I do the distressing because I like that edge that makes it pop a little bit more against the card stock. I used to do that with my cards too when I made cards. That's where I learned about inking edges. Okay. Let's just get these stuck down real quickly. is to put the toppers on and to make the envelope. Let's see what we're doing on time. I'm trying
trying to decide if I should do a part two. I think I will. So, say goodbye for now, and we'll, I will be back with the second half where I'll make this envelope and put the um, fibers on the 